So, uh, hi everyone, uh, this is where we left off last time and uh, what we are going to do today is just uh, add our stop motion effects uh, using MoGraph. Uh, so, okay, uh, we are back in uh, cinema and um, what I did to do my um, stop motion effects is uh, something like I did with uh, the animation so I put this uh, into a cloner uh, so that's not what we want we just want uh, a linear uh, mode and uh, only one clone so uh, yeah so uh, here what I'm gonna do is uh, go back to frame zero and uh, what I want is just uh, in my transform animation mode uh, set this to fixed. So uh, here uh, the, the whole uh, animation is back to frame zero. And then I just add uh, an, a plane effector. And this is uh, this plane will be used to um, to animate our cloner. So let's add a linear field. Uh, like that and uh, set up our uh, linear field so for now it's uh, changing the position uh, so this this will be our plane animation for the village uh, in our parameters uh, we, we don't want the position we want the time offset so the whole animation uh, takes place in there so the linear field uh, starts at, the, at zero and ends at uh, 90 frame 90 so let's close that and uh, for our plane uh, animation let's call this uh, cloner village Uh, for our plane animation, uh, what we want is just offset the, the time uh, by 90 frames. So, yeah, now uh, if I move my uh, plane through the village, uh, same as uh, in the previous video, we are going to animate everything. So, yeah, so this, this will be uh, to control our animation. But uh, what we want is when the uh, plane uh, goes through uh, our village, we don't want a linear animation. What we want is uh, uh, something that, uh, that moves uh, only every two frames. So we get our uh, stop motion effects. So I reset uh, the, the position and the uh, scale rotation of everything. So then, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to add uh, another cloner, like this. Uh, add a null object inside. Uh, and so this null object, I'm going to call this... I'm going to cha change this to uh, a box, uh, a cube, so we're going to see it better. And uh, I just want one clone. So. So I'm gonna uh, add another plane. So uh, this uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide my uh, animation plane, um, and I'm gonna add this to another layer so I can hide it uh, more easily. So then, what I wanna do is this plane. Is gonna move uh, the clones inside inside this uh, cloner. So let's call this cloner stop motion and uh, plane stop motion stop move. So this is gonna uh, I'm gonna go to my parameters and I wanna move uh, the clones by uh, 100 centimeters. I just add a linear field. 
so as you can see now uh, when I move my linear field it's moving my null and uh, next what I want to do is so here I'm gonna set the exposition on 100 centimeters and uh, maybe on frame 100 I'm gonna go back to I don't know uh, like minus 100 okay and set another keyframe here so now uh, this uh, is moving our uh, null object here and then what we, we and what we want is uh, just I want to use this null uh, to move our plane animation We just want to remap that and uh, we don't want something linear so we are going to change our control mode to quantize so this enables us to add some steps to the uh, linear field so as you can see here when i change to 10 for example you have this uh, stepped uh, look to our uh, fall off and so when you look at the null object, it's moving um, using steps uh, and it's not uh, linear anymore. Okay, so let's change this uh, to 50. We have uh, 100 uh, frames for the animation, so and now, uh, okay, it may not be obvious, but it works. So this, um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna set this to linear because otherwise it doesn't uh, work well. I select my curve and uh, I, I set it to linear. Okay, and then uh, what I'm going to do here is. Uh, I can change my steps. Uh, maybe uh, if I set it to 25, it will be more obvious on the recording. And then, uh, yeah. So what I want to do now is use my null object and uh, use it to move my uh, plane animation. So I just add uh, uh, an expresso tag to my uh, plane animation. I will copy over my clone stop motion and uh, also my and also my plane anim and uh, I'm gonna look for um, uh, data node in exp and in Expresso. Okay, and uh, I'm linking the object to the object on this side. Here we have uh, index 0 and uh, index 0 is the first clone. Uh, we have only one, so okay. And uh, on this side, I'm gonna link the position to the um, global position of uh, the plane uh, animation. And so, uh, what's happening now is if I show you the plane animation. Uh, I hit play and uh, so the plane is following the the null object. And uh, I guess I, I just have to reset my linear field so it's really centered on the null object. And uh, we have a small uh, offset in the in time here. When I when I get back to to frame zero, as you will see, I um, my null is moving, but uh, the the linear field is uh, staying in place. To correct this, I just change my priority on the uh, espresso tag. Uh, I set it to generators, and so now every, everything works fine. 
Okay, um, then I, uh, I I show the the houses again, and now uh, what we have is uh, the animation is reversed. So to change that, I just go to the linear field of my uh, animation, go to uh, remapping, and just invert. And now uh, this is what what we want. Uh, so we have our building effects as we expected. So what we have now uh, is uh, we don't have our complete animation. Uh, so to correct this, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, select my position. So this is a vector. So I add a vector to real. This allows me to split my uh, X, Y, and Z, and so I just add another reels to vector, and so on. Now, um, Y and Z shouldn't move, so I just so I just uh, connect my output to my uh, global position. So I uh, I want. So uh, Y and Z should be move, so I just can connect them. Uh, and what I want to change is the X, and then to do that I just add a uh, range mapper. So I connect this, and uh, here in the range mapper, uh, what I'm going to change is we don't want to go from 0 to 1, we want it to go from 0 to 100. And in the output, what we want is going from minus 100 to 100. So now uh, it's working like we expect. So we don't have to, to change our uh, plain animation village uh, and uh, the cloner uh, we just uh, we can just play around with the linear field and uh, so for now it's a really linear uh, animation but uh, if you want we now can uh, just change uh, the timing of uh, the animation if I select my linear field, uh, if I want, I just, uh, for now it's 25 frames, 25 steps, so it's one frame every four frames. I change this to 50, so it's one frame every second frame. And now, um, if I want, for example, I can just select my linear field and uh, move my uh, second keyframe, so maybe on frame 50, so it's quicker, like so. Uh, if I want, I can also uh, change my uh, frame steps uh, here, uh, 25, because we have uh, 50 frames, so I adjust my frame steps to 25. But if I want, I can also uh, move all my keyframes uh, to the right, so it's starting uh, later. So here it's starting later. Maybe you're asking why uh, we use a second cloner and a second uh, plane to animate the plane animation. Um, so we could uh, delete those two and the expresso tag and uh, animate everything in there so uh, let's see so I add a keyframe on frame 0 I move to frame 200 and add a second keyframe so if we now go to the control and uh, set it to quantize and uh, set the steps to 100 and uh, going to show f curve and uh, set the f curve to linear uh, our animation will take place uh, as expected we still have our um, stop motion effect uh, working 
well uh, the problem uh, appears when you go to F curves. I first uh, set this to Bezier, and and if, for example, I want the animation curve to look like this, so something quicker at the beginning and then uh, slower. If you do this, uh, the stop motion effect doesn't work anymore at the beginning. Um, uh, it's it's animating at each frame. So let's go back to our uh, side file. As a workaround, we use this uh, this second uh, cloner, and then instead of uh, uh, changing uh, the keyframes and uh, the the animation curve, uh, we change everything in the linear field. So we set the control mode to curve. And we can we can uh, do this here, and this is what uh, will trigger the animation and uh, using this uh, spline. So now uh, everything works again, and you have control over the um, animation speed. So yeah, uh, all of the animation is done uh, using this um, these techniques. So the only uh, uh, the only thing that can be uh, a little heavy when you use this technique is uh, uh, when you have uh, one MoGraph object inside another, uh, it's really slowing down. So here it's it's not that heavy what we have inside our animation, so it's it's working. Uh, but for my video, what I used is. Uh, xref so i animated everything in a separate file and then in my master file uh, i simply uh, imported each animation uh, using xref so that was uh, more convenient to to see the animation in real time and uh, and uh, turning the the xref on and off uh, to to save uh, on memory so yeah, I hope uh, this was helpful and uh, that you learned something. So see you in another video. Bye everyone.